everyone welcome back to my class this is Ruman Ali I hope you all are doing well in today's class I'm going to start a lesson motion and time in this lesson we are going to start a topic that is motion and rest first we are going to discuss about the terms like motion and rest so if the object moves from one position to another position or if the object shows the changes in its position with respect to their surroundings then that object can set to be as in motion but when the object does not show any change in its position if it remains on the same position with respect to their surrounding and in a given time then that object can set to be as a rest does not change their position so it's very clear that motion is nothing but movement the meaning of motion is movement an object is set to be in motion when it changes its position with respect to the surroundings in a given interval of time and an object is set to be at rest when it remains in its position without any change in its position with respect to the surrounding and in a given time then that objects are set to be at rest so this is the difference between the terms motion and rest let us take one example to understand more clearly about the terms motion and rest so here is a picture given so when we observe these pictures we can clearly say that the position of the car changes after the two seconds the change in the position of the car can be observed after a period of time with respect to their surroundings but when we observe the tree the tree is an object that will be there in its own position even with respect to their surroundings they do not move so the objects which are remain in their position which do not undergo any change in its position with respect to their surroundings that objects are said to be at rest and this car as it is changing its position with respect to their surroundings and in a given interval of time or in a given time then these objects are said to be in motion so here we can clearly say that the tree is at rest and the car is in motion let us discuss about the state of rest and state of motion to understand it more clearly let us do one activity in this activity we are going to take one toy car one stone and we'll take one small ball all these things are taken and these things are kept on a table after keeping these things on the table observe it for two minutes what you are going to observe so after two minutes we can see that these things are that are placed on the table they do not change their position they remain in their same position so these things are said to be in the state of rest but when we pull the toy car the stone or the small ball which are kept on a table for example this is a small stone that is placed on the table if we pull this stone or if we pull this small ball then it start changes its position it moves from one point to another point now these objects are in the state of motion or by this activity we can understand that when we place the things on a table if they remain in their own position then they are in the state of rest but if they move from one position to another position that means if they are going to change their position then they are said to be in the state of motion so this is the difference between the state of rest and the state of motion now we are going to study about uniform and non-uniform motions if an object object is nothing but anything if an object travels equal distances at equal interval of time then these objects are in a uniform motion that means they show the uniform motion movement uniform movement but if the object travels unequal distances at equal interval of time then these objects are said to be in non-uniform motion 
Let us take some examples to understand it more clearly. So, here we are going to take an example of hands of seconds in the wall clock. So, how the hands of seconds in the wall clock shows the uniform motion? You might have observed the clock. So, whenever we observe the hands of seconds, it changes its position at equal interval of time. That means, after one second, it changes its position that too it moves at equal distance. So, in this way the hands of seconds in the wall clock shows uniform motion. But in the case of non-uniform motion, we will take an example of uh, motion of bus or car or train. So, these are the vehicles that are moving that can travel unequal distances at equal interval of time. They do not travel equal distances. They are going to travel unequal distances. Here we will take an example of butterfly. The butterfly is an insect who travels unequal distances and it shows non-uniform motion. So, in this way this is the difference between a uniform motion and non-uniform motion. In simple words, uniform motion is nothing but traveling equal distances and in simple words, non-uniform motion can be defined as traveling unequal distances in a given time. So, this is about the uniform and non-uniform motion. In uniform motion, we can take an example of hands of seconds in the wall clock and in non-uniform motion, we can take an example of butterfly who travels different flowers, it means who travels unequal distances in a given interval of time. Let us take one more example to understand the differences between the uniform and non-uniform motion. So, here we are going to take an example of car this is the data given about the car A and here is the data given about the car B. So, this is the time in seconds and distance traveled by the car A. So, in 0 seconds 0 meter and in 10 seconds it moves 150 meters. So, by observing the data or by observing the distance traveled by the car A, we can say that for car A, uh, the change in the position for every 10 seconds is 150 meter and after 10 seconds, it again moves more 150 meter then it becomes 300 meter. So, this is how uh, the change in the position shown by the car A is at every 10 seconds, it is moving 150 meters. But in the case of car B, we can say that for first 10 seconds, it is moving 50 meters, for 20 seconds it is moving 90 meters, for second 10 seconds it is moving 90 meters, for third 10 seconds it is moving 180 meter. Here there is no constant change in its position due to the distance traveled by the car B is unequal, we can say that the motion of the car B is non-uniform. If the car is moving at equal distance in a given time, then that object is called as uniform. So, here we can say that the car A is changing its position in a constant manner and it is moving at equal distances at equal intervals of time. So, it is said to be in uniform motion. In case of car B, as it is not moving equal distances, the unequal distances we can find that the car B is reaching. So, the car B as it is not showing the constant change in its position, this car B is said to be in non-uniform motion uh, based on the change in their position we can classify them as uniform and non-uniform objects. Let us study about the different types of motion. So, based on the path on which the objects move, there are three different types of motions that can be seen and they are translatory motion, rotatory motion and oscillatory motion. First, we will talk about the first one that is translatory motion. To understand this type of motion, let us see what to do. First, we need to take a stone, tie the stone with a string. Now, keep that stone on a table and slowly pull the string uh, that was tied to the stone. So, when you pull the string in a horizontal way, the stone started to move in a horizontal position on the table 
and this motion is called as this movement of the stone along a straight line is called as translatory motion. When a stone moves in a horizontal way and when all the particles of the stone are going to move in a direction of motion then that type of movement is called as translatory motion. This translatory motion is of two types based on the movement of the object and they are rectilinear motion and curvilinear motion. If an object is going to move along a straight line then that motion or that translatory motion is called as rectilinear motion. Here we can take an example of riding a bicycle on a straight road throwing a stone by standing at a certain height. So, if we throw a stone by standing at a certain height, the stone moves in a straight line. It moves along with the straight line. So, that translatory motion is said to be as rectilinear motion. And curvilinear motion means if an object in a translatory motion, if it is going to move along with the curved path, then that type of movement is called as curvilinear motion or curvilinear movement. In this case, we can take an example of car taking turn on the road. When a car uh, takes turn, it moves along the curved path. So, that type of movement is called as curvilinear motion. And uh, uh, the bus that is moving on the hill station. So, these are the examples that we can take under the different types of translatory motion. Translatory motion is nothing but movement of all the particles of an object along with the direction of motion that is called as translatory motion. Depending upon the path along which the object moves, they are divided into two types. They are rectilinear motion and curvilinear motion. If an object is going to move along a straight line, then this is called as rectilinear motion. If an object in a translatory motion moves along the curved path, then that is called as curvilinear motion. Meet you in next class. Thank you.